Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners and thank you for joining me on this video today. And today we're going to be talking about what's going on here with Walmart and Publix and Dollar Tree. Um, I've gone to all three of them since the hurricane hit just to see what kind of products and stuff they do have. Some of these stores are just mobbed and very difficult to try to get any type of videos or anything else because there's just so many people. It is just insane because a lot of people just aren't prepared. So I go into Walmart. Walmart looked like March of 2020. I mean, there was very little things on the shelves on certain aisles. Uh, cereal was one of them. There is no water. Forget it. And uh, canned goods. Canned goods aisles are just swamped. They, they're slim pickings, okay? Uh, if you like lima beans, if you like wax beans, now nah, there's plenty of those. But if you want green beans, corns, potatoes, peas, carrots, all that kind of stuff, there are none. If you are looking to get canned meat, um, no tuna fish, no, no chicken, there was no roast beef, anything like that. Uh, there was a few cans of Spam left, and there was a few uh, single cans of Vienna sausages. Um, all the six packs, 12 packs, all those things were gone. Raviolis were gone. Um, all these different products. Uh, the frozen food section was hit really hard. And there wasn't a lot of frozen vegetables. There wasn't a lot of frozen dinners or anything. So, you know, if you do have a gas stove at home, you can still cook. You can turn your oven on. Uh, all you need is a lighter and you can do it right there. If you're running on natural gas or propane, yes, you're electronic ignition there that is powered by what you have to plug into your 110 to light your stove for you automatically does not work but if you have a lighter you can still light it up and cook away uh, dollar tree was just my dollar tree right down the street here was a disaster uh, it was empty anything that was had to do with food products paper products those type of things um, it was all empty as in like with walmart a lot of the paper products and stuff were all gone. Uh, dairy section was pretty well empty. Uh, the meat section, they did have, still have meat and stuff like that. No chicken. Um, so, you know, I mean, people can adapt. The problem is here is a lot of people just don't do it the right way. Let me finish talking about the stores and we're going to get into that also. Publix. I went to Publix because Publix is the most expensive place around here really to shop. All right. It's like... You know, Walmart is the cheapest, Walmart, Aldi's, you know, Aldi's wasn't open, so I didn't go there. Uh, Walmart, Aldi's are probably the cheapest. Then you got like Winn-Dixie and Dollar Tree and Family Dollar. And then you go up to Publix, which is the top of the line. Now, I pull into Publix and this, the parking lot was just cram full. Everybody was at Publix. So I go into Publix to get a few things uh, that I wasn't able to get at the other stores that I was looking for. And basically it was just to top off my preps. And, you know, I was trying to see if I could also get some uh, more propane. I do have three 20 pound cylinders. I did use one and I wanted to see if I could just get another one. Nobody has any propane and nobody knows when the propane truck is going to come and fill up all their cages. I just ditched on that one there. I did go into Publix. Uh, they had no eggs, no milk, very few things of any coffee creamers, half and half of that kind of stuff. So hope you like coffee black, especially if you're living down here in Florida because a lot of places don't have too much. Um, canned goods were the same as all the other stores, all ransacked, doesn't matter what it was, rice and um, pastas, pasta sauce, vegetables, canned meats, all that stuff was all ravaged. Uh, the lunch meat section was pretty much ravaged, the packaged lunch meat, the deli was still open. Uh, you could get fresh deli meats and stuff right there. They did have plenty of that. And their uh, meat and everything was, you know, pretty much uh, full because Publix is the most expensive. So, Unless you really wanted to spend a lot of money on, you know, one piece of meat, you know, that hopefully could feed a family of four, you know, it, it's kind of tough. So that's why people are trying to head towards all the canned meats and everything else. But here's the problem, folks. Okay. All these stores are still having the issues after the storm. After the storm is something you have to prepare for. Also, everybody thinks you prepare for the storm. That's why it is so important to prepare for after the storm, because you still have all these mass shortages 
that you're going to have for a very long time, especially in an affected area as the state of Florida is right now. Now, remember, this doesn't just include Florida. This storm has gone all the way up through. It has affected the whole shipping process throughout the country. That is what people have to really remember. People do not think about how these massive storms, if it happens on the East Coast, the West Coast is sitting there saying, well, doesn't affect me. What do I got to worry about? Stuff is not going to move, folks, okay? Once they start shutting down certain companies, they start shutting down uh, certain shipping ways as far as trains, as far as any of the roads, trucks, you know, planes, however they want to move this stuff, these storms affect everything. Now, a lot of my gas stations around here, you know, your little 7-Elevens and, you know, your little mom and pop stores that are gas stations, they don't have gas. Stores open, but they don't have gas. You see, because 50% of the fuel that comes into Florida comes through the port of Tampa. So while the storm's all coming over there, you think they're going to let these freighters try to come into the port over there? No, they're evacuating it. So you're not getting your daily supply and keeping everything rolling. The fuel trucks can't roll because they were shutting down all the major roadways and everything else. And once the winds get to a certain level, trucks are not allowed on the road to begin with anyways. So safely. Some companies like to push that envelope um, not going to mention any names, but you know, some companies really like to push that envelope because to them, it's more about money and getting things delivered than it is about the safety of their employees. But that's just how it works. Okay. Now you also have to re remember that one of the main key things that you have to prepare for when we are talking about these shortages in these stores and everything else, that's what you have to plan for. If you're not a prepper and you're going to run to the store when they tell you, boom, a hurricane's coming. All right, so now you're running to the store. You're trying to buy whatever you can get off the shelves and everything else. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, this will get me through three or four days. All right, about the time, of, you know, a, a decent storm like this one lasted. I mean, because it just kind of like died out. And But what about afterwards? See, people don't think about afterwards. And if people don't have any type of food, because there's so many millions of people out here that just want to just, you know, when they want something for dinner, they go and buy it. Nobody plans ahead anymore. All right. And this is a big mistake that a lot of people out there in this country are making right now because you do not even plan ahead for one week of food. You go to the store every single day and you have to buy something for dinner. You have to get something for lunch or you order your lunch out, which is a big waste of money. Um, you know, the whole nine yards, you can make it and take it to work. It's going to save you more money, especially the times we live in. But the point of this is you have to think out in the future. Once the storm has passed, now what do I do? Because a lot of people just don't really use their heads and say, well, you know what? The store is in there suffer. They're probably going to be closed. If there's no power, who's going to be open? And what are we going to do then? Right? I just want to bring this quick video to you that I do every Sunday and everything else. I know a lot of the shortages that are going on around here and the shortages are going to keep going on. You're going to keep going south and everything else. And you know what? We're right back to square one with what things look like in the stores of March of 2020 when Charlie Victor 19 came to town. Now we got to see how long it's going to take for all these companies to regroup, get things all put together and start getting the stores and stuff all stocked back up. It's going to take a while, folks. It's not going to be like a snap of the finger. This is going to take a while. This is going to affect a lot of people. This is why you need to be prepping. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video. I hope everybody stays safe. You keep prepping as much as you possibly can. And help your neighbor out if there's nothing wrong with that. We need to get back to trying to help out maybe our friends and family. Your neighbor can't hurt. Catch you all on the flip side.